In this video, I'm gonna show you how to set up the location targeting for your Google ad campaigns the right way. Location targeting or geo-targeting on Google is something that a lot of advertisers get wrong, which can lead to higher costs and fewer conversions. Very important you get this right. I'm gonna show you exactly how to do it in this video. So I'm in an example Google ad account here, and I've gone to the campaign creation process and I've gotten to the place where you enter in your locations. Now you see interestingly that the default here is all countries and territories, which is what Google would quite like you to enter in. They also give you the option to target the entire country that you're based in. That's not what I recommend you do in any scenario. Google wants to encourage you to advertise to the largest areas possible. That's obviously where there's more search volume. That's obviously where you're gonna end up spending more money, most likely. That's not what's in your interest, that's what's in Google interest. I'd much rather you select enter another location and instead of just adding stuff in here, we're gonna go ahead and click on advanced search. I'm gonna split this up into two different options. Firstly, for local businesses, those that offer a service, your product even, that's delivered in a local area, and then for businesses that operate nationally or internationally, because you want to do things differently depending on which of those two categories you fit into. Okay, and then for demonstration purposes, I'm going to use, assume a business is located in London, England. Good morning, England. So let's go ahead and select the whole city. That's gonna narrow us in on the map nicely on the right-hand side. And then what I'm going to do is delete this out. Now, let's assume your business based in London and you service all of London, I still would not recommend that you target the entire city. That's far too large an area, far too many people. It's much better off with Google Ads to be more specific with your target areas. Start small, grow from there. That's what she said. <laughs> because we want to concentrate data. If we targeted all of London, you'd end up with, you know, a click from there, a click from there, a click from there, a click from there, all, all over the city, right? You wouldn't get the concentrated data that lets you know, ah, this specific area produces better results than this one. Whereas if you break them out, you do get that data easily and you can then exclude the worst performing areas and go after the best performing areas. That can really help improve your results your campaign get and stop you wasting budget, very, very important. So the way we're gonna do that is if we click on show all areas on the right hand side, and you'll see that London has now been broken down into these various um, sections. Some of them are, are grayed out because they're slightly different, but we'll, we'll get to that. When you click down on this top right hand side, you can see you can search uh, by neighborhood, by postcode, and the options here are going to vary slightly depending on the country that you're in. Obviously in UK, we have postcodes, in the US you have zip codes, but they're gonna operate similarly. If for example, we were a business based in West London. Let's say we're based over here. Even if you may service the whole of London, there's absolutely nothing wrong with starting close to where you are. Why waste time traveling, getting across the city when you could get customers right where you are? So that's the first thing I would say when you're looking to select the areas to target is, where are you based? Let's start there, okay? So let's say I'm assuming you want to target in there, happy to target in Hammersmith as well. Maybe we go a little bit further south. And, and if we've got a small budget, let's say less than a thousand pounds, thousand dollars a month, we might just start targeting a couple of different postcode areas. Um, like I said, the more budget you have, the more data you're going to generate, therefore the more target areas you can target because you can work out which ones perform better or not. If with say $1,000 a month, we were to target the whole city, it's gonna take us literally months to find out how areas perform. So obviously we're gonna start by looking at where we're based. You also want to add in some areas of where your customers do come from. Like if you've been operating for a while, you may have an idea of, okay, our customers come from here or our best customers come from those locations. Absolutely fine to focus on those um, and I would encourage you to do so. If you're just getting started and you haven't got that sort of history around where your customers like to come from, just have a think about what you offer and take your best guess. We can always adjust it later on, but take your best guess. For example, if you're a landscape gardener, you're probably better off advertising a little bit further out of the city center where there are more gardens. Um, whereas if you go into the middle, you're gonna be in more apartment buildings and things like that. You, you don't want to waste budget advertising to people that are not likely to become your customers. So let's say we get started with something like this campaign goes well and we want to look to expand into other areas. Firstly, without if you want to keep the same budget, I would not expand into other areas unless you are easily spending your daily budget. If you are looking to spend, let's say, $100 a day, 3000 a month roughly, and you're only spending $60 a day, okay, well then you would want to add in some other location targeting options because perhaps that's going to well, it's most likely gonna get you to the budget that you want without having to change any other elements, and that's absolutely fine. And of course, start with the areas that you're most happy to, to then move into 
next, right? Let's say you're spending your daily budget and you are generating good lead sales, etc., from your best target areas and you want to expand, you want to scale up the campaign, you can also look to add in target areas as well. As you're doing so, don't go mad, much better to start off smaller and then add in slowly. It'd be much better scenario where you're spending $100 a day, you want to go up to $200 a day, if you were to only add in one or two areas, and let's say that only gets you to 150 spent because there's just not the search volume, and then you can come back in and add some more, as opposed to going the other way and having your budget stretch too thinly. Now, I've talked about advertising, you know, just a couple different postcodes, a few different postcodes with a thousand pounds a day, adding in some more as you scale. You will have to keep an eye on the audience sizes. So this reach on the right hand, on the left hand side is gonna show you how large these audiences are. And London's a city with really high population density. So even a reasonable size budget, it's not gonna go very far um, in terms of geographical locations. If we're advertising in a place that's much more spread out, you could look to add in a lot more um, areas um, just to get that population up. And again, you're also going to have to monitor that in conjunction with the keywords you're looking to target. Some keywords have a lot more search volume than others. You may find that your whole budget can get eaten up with just one postcode area, but maybe in other scenarios, if you're advertising something pretty niche that's not searched for very often, you need to add in other location targeting options in order to get near to the budget that you want to use. And as you grow, absolutely fine to keep adding, but just be cautious, start off small, and then regularly come back into your campaign and take a look at the data, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, and go, aha, okay, out of these seven locations we're targeting, these four produce the best results. You know what, let's go ahead and pause these other three. We don't need to be advertising there. We're going to get better results overall. That's something that I would encourage anyone to do regularly can really help improve performance. Okay, in a second, I'm gonna show you what to do if you're a business that can advertise nationally or internationally. But before I do that, I wanna very quickly ask for you to subscribe to my channel. If you find this video useful, find this sort of content helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you subscribed and hit that thumbs up button, that really helps me out. Okay, so national or international advertisers. Let's go ahead and delete these all out. And then let's assume you're a business that is looking to advertise on Google and you service the entire United States. And um, so if we go ahead and target that, we can see that's all selected there. Now, even if you can service the entire United States, you can see the audience size is massive and we run into very similar issues that I talked about before where your budget is stretched too thinly and you can't work out where your best results come from. So what I'd recommend you do is pick in this scenario, maybe one, maybe two states that you think the best results are going to come from, get started with that and then look to expand very similarly to what we did with the postcode area I demonstrated previously. So instead of the US, we might, for example, look to target California, if that's where um, we know that our you know customers come from. So again, the same logic applies in terms of selecting areas. Where do your customers come from historically? Or where do you think they're going to come from? Where do your best quality customers come from? Where are you located? Might make things like, even if you're selling a product, for example, might make things like shipping easier and cheaper. Always start with this sort of setup and start uh, more specific. You could, of course, break it down and go with more specific areas within California. Absolutely not got a problem with that. But if you do want to get up to the point where you are advertising to a lot of the whole of the US, maybe operating at the state level is going to work out quite well for you. So probably more simple with that sort of setup, but just really look to get more specific. And maybe maybe one's just you know not quite right. Maybe you want to add it. I'm not saying you have to go with one state. You could We could, for example, look to advertise to um, California and Nevada. Maybe that would be an appropriate size um, audience for us. Obviously, you can check back and take a look at your data, which I'm going to show you how to do in a second, along with a couple of other tips. But this is the sort of setup. And then from here, the same logic applies as what we did with the location targeting. Now, you have to once again think about your budget in conjunction with these areas. Now, most businesses that want to advertise nationally or internationally are going to be operating with significantly larger budgets than smaller local businesses, which is why maybe you can target whole states. If you are actually operating with a smaller budget, it will be absolutely fine instead of going with the whole of California to then really specifically narrow down to actually we just want to reach people in LA or in San Francisco or something like that, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and save this because there's a couple of things that I really want to highlight that are quite important. The first is if we go ahead and click on location options, you'll see that the default is to target people under presence or interest. So that's people in, regularly in, or who've shown interest in your targeted locations, that's what's recommended. Now, when you read that, I'm sure you think like I do, what a load of nonsense. I don't want to target people that are interested 
in my target locations. I want to target people that live there, or at least there often, you know, you can't quite get live there, but you know what I mean. This is especially important if you're advertising in a location that is popular and that lots of people are interested in, like California or New York or cities like London. There's gonna be a real issue if people's search behavior or, or online behavior shows that they're interested in those places it doesn't mean anything, it doesn't mean they're gonna buy your, to go back to the previous example, landscape services. If they're interested in London, they could live halfway across the country. So definitely go ahead and change that to just presence. People in or regularly in your targeted locations. Most of those are going to live in your targeted locations or at least nearby, let's say if they commute in, um, but that's a much, much better option. And we've seen significant improvements in results simply for changing this setting, most commonly with your local businesses where people need to live there in order to, to, to be interested. Another thing I want to, to quickly mention if we go back into advanced search is that Google's location targeting is not perfect. So if you really do just want customers in California, Nevada, then I would recommend excluding the nearby bordering states. It could be a couple percent of your budget, could be a bit more, could be 10% of your budget to be wasted if you can't service customers in those locations. So for example, we would look to add in Oregon and we would exclude, right? Um, and then we could come out and do the same with Arizona and Utah and Idaho and, and places where people might be crossing back and forth with the border. And, and the same, by the way, would apply at the local level. So if you're just advertising to a specific county or specific postcodes, and you really don't want customers in, in, in around the surrounding areas, maybe you do in those cases, it's fine to not target them, but also not exclude. But if you don't, if that's a too far or they're not the right people there for the most part, then you can go ahead and exclude those postcodes as well. A tip that can help save you a bit of budget and help improve your results. Okay, and then one thing I'd recommend you do regularly is come in and take a look at your locations report and make adjustments accordingly. So if there are underperforming locations, you can remove those. If there are really good performing locations, you could choose to spend more in those in, in those spots. So the way you do that is obviously come into your campaign over here on the left-hand side, and then under that select locations and then locations, and you can see something like this. This is a business that was advertised sort of in central Southern England. We're advertising at the county level here. They're advertising for keywords that don't get a huge amount of search volume. But we could come in here and we could see that out of these, what, seven, eight counties that we're targeting, which ones have got the best cost per click. Um, if we have conversion data, which we don't in this campaign, then fantastic. We can use that to inform our decisions, whether or not we target. You can see that from a, a cost per click standpoint, these are all pretty similar, um, these counties, which is not surprising for this type of business, but sometimes you do see really big differences. And then what you might, for example, decide, okay, Berkshire's not right. So what you can do is you can click edit and you can remove, you can even specifically exclude if you decide I don't want anyone that's even dipping in and out of that place um, as, as an option. And over time, this can really help, doing this process again and again can really help improve performance, particularly if you're looking to scale and expand into new areas, you can test them, um, remove the underperformers and, and get better results by doing so. Getting your location targeting right is important, but if you want the best possible results, there are a number of other things you need to optimize in your Google Ad campaigns. In this video, I share my favorite Google Ads tips and best practices. A lot of them are easy to implement, but can make a massive difference to your results.